Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm with Scott O'Neill. How you doing, hey, Scott? Hey, Tom. Good to see you, as always. Good to see you, too. Yeah. Okay, now, tell everybody who you represent. You represent, sure. like, in a way, like Davis, uh, University of Davis, and uh, through, say, the uh, cooperation. Uh, yeah, the, so some people refer to us as the Extension Service or the Farm Advisor's Office, but officially it's uh, the University of California Cooperative Extension. Okay, so. and lately, last year, they went into a money-saving mode. We so did. We've got three counties, I believe. Four now. counties. Four yeah, counties four that counties are counties uh, working together, and you're like the head administrative guy that uh, coordinates the three counties and what they're doing. Almost all the three counties. Well, let's, we're going to talk about Star Thistle today. And I, I bet all the counties have problems with Star oh, it Thistle. Is. It's probably one, one of our most uh, prominent weeds here in the foothills. Yeah, it causes lots and lots of concerns, recreational concerns. You know, if you've ever tried walking through it in summertime, getting poked and prodded, uh, certainly is an issue for a lot of our ranchers and livestock. Uh, it definitely degrades the livestock uh, capability. So big concern for a lot of us. It's such a, uh, you know, right now it doesn't look too pretty. It is a pretty plant yeah. when it's growing. Yeah. It's got a nice yellow flower. Uh, I know, uh, I didn't get on my star thistle as soon as I could. I just had like one plant, but I noticed the bees were working it, and so oh, I'll wait a little bit more, and then you know, uh, everybody seemed to to like it, mm -hmm. but it's really hard to pull out. It's full of uh, thorns yeah. right now. These are, aren't aren't bad like when you try to pull it out later when it's a live plant, but. Uh, it's it's a big menace. It is, yeah. Right now, I think it covers about 18 million acres in California. Oh. Um, it was brought in, I think, around 1852, 1853 from uh, Europe. Um, it was a contaminant of alfalfa seed, believe it or not. And uh, since then, it's just been, you know, it's a very competitive plant. It's not native to here, and it um, really does well in our Mediterranean climate and just can outcompete so many of the other plants. And so, um, you know, it just, it's one of those plants of major concern. So we're really trying to, to do a lot of public outreach to get uh, folks, one, to recognize it and then learn how to control it. Right. It it's kind of grows along the roadways because, as my understanding, I could be wrong, but I think Caltrans somehow got some of it, some, some bad uh, hay or something that they put at the side of the mm -hmm. roads for uh, erosion control or something, and it had... Uh, Seeds, yeah, seeds in it. It certainly can. And once this thing has seeds, they're everywhere. You know, it rubs off on you really easy. Yeah. And uh, in fact, we had a great joke bringing it in. It's like, you bring that in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we don't want any of that that around. Yeah. Uh, but it can be contained. Mm -hmm. And it's a good idea, like you said. I remember doing some uh, some programs for ranchers because it can start to take over the uh, grazing lands. Yeah. And once it gets big. Uh, cows can't eat it. Yeah, exactly. And you know, it, you know, once it gets these really prickly thorns on it, you know, animals just have a tendency not to eat it. Those little thorns can get in their mouths and cause injury and abscesses and then, uh, you know, they can get sick. And so really, um, it's just best if we can control it. And there's mm -hmm. lots of great ways to, uh, to control this plant, okay. both chemically and non-chemically. Okay, and of course, a good reason to control it is just because I kind of compared it to, you know what it's like when you get... Uh, 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 poison oak, poison oak, yeah, Pos yeah. It, it moves from one place to the other place, and yeah. this stuff does that. It just it'll 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 move, yeah, really uh, really quickly. So my one plant became five or six, and now maybe it's ten. They're little, and uh, I'm gonna treat it with Roundup because mm -hmm. uh, that's easy for me to do. You brought a few uh, yeah things in here today, yeah. So you know. Um, you know, like I said, we'll, we, uh, we definitely try to give landowners all the different control strategies, whether they're hand pulling a few small plants, if they just have a few small plants, that's very easy to do. But, um, you know, as your populations get larger, if you have acres and acres of it, you're not going to be able to, to go out and hand pull. And maybe you might need to, to use a chemical. And um, some of the chemical companies recently have come up with some herbicides that are very selective. You mentioned Roundup, which works great on it. Uh, but Roundup is a what we call a non-selective herbicide. So basically, whatever Roundup comes in contact with right. will kill it. I guess I like it because Roundup basically just goes on the, cre the green leaf exactly. and goes down through that way. So, yeah. you know, uh, it's not into the ground. Exactly. And, and whatever might be coming up underneath it is... Uh still okay. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that works perfectly fine. We definitely recommend that as one strategy. Uh, the other herbicides that are available, um, there's a, a couple of different ones that I, that I brought here. This one here is available over the counter at a lot of hardware star stores. It's uh, called uh, Star Thistle Killer. I mean, this is a, <laughs> could it get a better is, name than that? I'm not sure. We probably can't get a good shot of that, but yeah, anyway. Yeah, but it's available at a lot like. of uh, home and garden stores, a lot of uh, hardware stores, and uh, what's nice about that product is it's uh, pretty darn selective. It 
that can actually be sprayed over the top of, you know, if you've got yellow star thistle intermixed with grasses and other broadleaf plants. Sweet it peas. Can, uh, it can basically take out yellow star thistle and leave everything else alone. Wow. Yeah. And what's nice about it is you can apply it uh, once this time of the year and it'll give you season long control. It'll prevent, uh, it'll kill the plants that are actually up and growing right now and okay. it'll prevent any new, uh, new uh, seeds from germinating for the rest of the spring, which is uh, pretty remarkable. I'd say so. Yeah, so this yeah. is a this is a pretty maybe I maybe I will use this instead. Yeah, so it's you know it's, it's available comes in a pretty small bottle, but this probably makes uh, quite a lot of spray. It, it does, it? yeah. So that little bottle is uh, roughly eight ounces, and it's enough to treat. Depending on you know the rate that you apply it, it can treat uh, two acres. So uh, that little bottle can go a long way. Um, you know, if, if somebody has more than a couple acres, then I would probably recommend them to uh, move into this product here called Milestone. Um, same kind of active ingredient, uh, very similar chemistry to this one here, um, but it actually is even more potent to uh, killing yellow star thistle and harder to control thistles. So. And uh, this is, we're, we're going to take a break, then we'll come back. Uh, so stay with us right here on TSPAN. We'll find out more about star thistle and how to get rid of it. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. Hello, we're back. Tom Slavik. I'm talking with Scott Onetto from the UCC system, and uh, they're going to be holding some classes on how to get rid of star thistle, and he's trying to educate me right now how to get rid of uh, some of mine. Uh, there's different products. We brought this one up. Why don't you talk about this one once again? Yeah, yeah. Basically, so both of these are specific, just to yeah. Both of them are specific. Uh, pretty much only can uh, control members of the sunflower family. So um, yellow star thistle being a member of that family, yeah. it really targets that family. They're classified as what we call broadleaf herbicides. So they kill technically all broadleafs, but at very very low rates. Um, yellow star thistle seem to be very susceptible to it, and that's what gives it its selectivity. Would a broadleaf be like a dandelion? Yeah, I exactly. I notice these kind of look a little dandelion. They look like dandelions, so this time of the year, it's, um, you know, people don't really think about yellow star thistle this time of the year, because this is what it looks like right now if you're out and about. Um, mm -hmm. It's very small, inconspicuous, you wouldn't even give it a second thought, but, um, you know, that plant there over the next couple of months is just going to be putting all of its root, all of its energy into root development, and then by spring and early summer, that's when we start seeing yellow star thistle just take its glory and growing into something, you know, as big as three to four feet tall and making, you know, thousands of flowers. Okay, and once you get it, it's it's not necessarily hard to get rid of it, but uh, you certainly have to go out of your way to do it. You have it. to be persistent. Yeah, okay. persistence is key. All right. So now... When is the best time to get rid of it? It's probably almost right now. Yeah, right now. Typically, that's why we're doing especially a whole bunch of the, workshops. Especially yeah, especially if you're like using this. some of these products, uh, we usually recommend either applying it between January and typically March. I mean, you can go a little bit later, but really right now we're in the window of opportunity for uh, using one of these herbicides. You know, if you're going to do hand pulling or mowing or anything like that, I would recommend waiting, you know, until uh, later on in the season. But um, if you really have a lot and you want to use an herbicide, a selective herbicide, this is the time of the year to do it. That's why okay, we're now really this focusing on was uh, good for about two acres. Yeah. You had said. Yeah, it's a good for about two acres again. So, and you know, size. Eight, yeah, that size. So, eight ounces, um, you know, is enough to do two acres. So, again, very, very little chemical you're applying over a pretty large area, and that's what gives it selectivity, basically. And so okay. if you're looking at something, um, you know, more than two acres, uh, there is another product called Milestone that's sold in this quart container. Um, same, same kind of chemistry, so again, gives that selectivity to the sunflower family, uh, but just sold in larger containers. So if you have, you know, 10, 20, 30 acres. We don't uh, have know. many wild sunflowers up here, do we? Not really. There's uh, a few uh, natives that we'll, that we'll find uh, here and there, but they're pretty, uh, they're, you know, kind of uh, here and there, not really, uh, you know, de dense uh, uh, populations like we would see yellow star thistle, and usually okay, where so we you, find yellow star thistle, I guess we what's don't coming see from you wouldn't have to be too worried about uh, taking out Ex sunflowers, exactly. right? Yeah, you know, when yeah. you're going after the uh, going after the, your uh, star thistle. Okay, now you get a lot of uh, ranchers interested in. Uh, we do, yeah. A lot of ranchers, of course, uh, because of all the problems yellow star thistle can cause on their uh, properties. A lot of them are interested. Um, even in the the, the past uh, ten years, we uh, were able to get some uh, local grants to help farmers uh, and ranchers treat their properties for yellow star thistle. Unfortunately, you know that that kind of funding uh, is uh, long gone. But um, you know now there's you know there's definitely control measures that are pretty reasonable that they can do on their own, and we'll certainly help them however we can okay now do they uh i guess for me i'd probably put this in a small tank yeah 
if you, I know you have your little uh, little uh, farmette mm -hmm. down 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 there off 88. Yeah, a really great place. Do you? Uh, Put that in bigger things. So you walk it around. You, you can, yeah. You I drive? actually, I prefer uh, on, on small. You know, if it's an acre or so, um, I've got a small little backpack sprayer that holds three gallons, and um, I'll either use the little wand that it comes with, or I actually um, have a, a ten foot boom that I've made that I can also use with my backpack sprayer, and so I can ten, spray a ten foot wath uh, uh, in one, you know, in one uh, stretch. So you know, it depends on the, you know, on what the the property looks like. If there's a lot of outbuildings or trees and stuff, it makes a little bit harder with you know a big boom but um, you, know, you can certainly use an ATV um, all of those things are certainly uh, you know can be used okay now we're not uh, the only county that has this trouble I know yeah. uh, El Dorado just had a class for uh, start this yeah, last uh, week yeah to, to be able to get rid of that and we're having a class coming up pretty soon Tell us about that. Yes, yeah, so we've got um, eight eight more uh, yellow star thistle workshops coming up this month of February. So uh, basically, it's going to be a road show. We've got uh, pretty much two being offered in every county. So I think next week on the 13th, we're going to be uh, down in Sonora and in uh, Groveland. Uh, then we uh, will be doing a couple in uh, Calaveras County on February uh, 13th. Uh, then uh, we've got a couple in here uh, in uh, locally in Jackson um, on February 26th. One uh, in the morning from uh, 9 to 11 up at the uh, General Services office uh, there by the airport. And then right. in the afternoon uh, from 3 to 5, we'll be out in the Shenandoah Valley out at the old schoolhouse on Shenandoah School Road. So um, we've got lots of workshops coming up. Um, they can give us a call on our, at, at our extension office or check us out on the website and they can get right. all the details for those workshops. Okay, too. Uh, um, it, it'll be up on our site as well and uh, uh, probably quite a lot of uh, websites yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, to be able to get this information. Let's go on some other stuff because you're uh, with Master Gardeners. Yeah, Master Gardeners are going strong. We actually are starting up, we just uh, started up a training class down in uh, San Andreas here about two weeks ago. So we've got a class of about 25 uh, brand new volunteers that are starting up the training down there. And uh, we have a class starting up here in Jackson, uh, I believe in uh, three weeks. And we'll have, a, I think we've got a class of size of 35 starting up uh, here. So Master Gardener program's going strong. Okay, so what you're saying is we've got 35 new Master Gardeners yeah. that are uh, gonna start their training? Exactly, yeah. Okay. And uh, do they have, or have we already missed the pruning class that's going uh, on? I believe there was just, um, you know, I think there's one coming up. They just had a class this last Saturday, but I believe it was um, living in the um, uh, upcountry, working, uh, you know, putting in uh, new plants for uh, the upcountry residents. So I think the pruning class is coming up next week on uh, pruning grapevines. And so if people are interested, again, uh, check out um, our website or your website, and you can get the details on that uh, pruning workshop. Another thing, too, you might not need to go to a workshop. Just get a hold of a master gardener, and, yeah. uh, you know, they'll... Uh, they'll uh, yeah, they can call our master stuff. gardener hotline anytime and uh, leave a message or talk to the master gardeners. They're usually in the office four days a week. Another really cool thing that I think is really cool is, like, uh, uh, the master gardeners, I believe, are starting to work with, like, uh, the canning arts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is great because two go right together. They do. And, but uh, that might have been a lost art there for a while. Yeah, yeah. It's It seemed like we had a decline back in the uh, early 90s. It seemed like uh, home food preservation was a thing of the past. But um, in the last couple of years, boy, there's just been a resurgence in interest in uh, home food preservation. So we actually have a master food uh, preservation uh, program. And we actually have a training right now. We're training some new volunteers in that program right now. And uh, like I said, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge interest. A lot of people want to start using the produce that they're growing and uh, canning it so they can uh, use it for the rest of the year. So it's, it's great to see that uh, alive and well. Okay, and also, don't they have, does the fair have uh, some uh, canning? They uh, do, right? yeah. Where you can yeah, where you can enter into the fair, all your uh, jams and jellies and baked goods. And so, yeah, it's a, a huge interest. And actually... Um, does the canning also take into, uh, you know, the sort of the newer uh, freeze dry, the, you know, like the yeah. quick, quick freezes? They do, yeah. Like they're that, they're doing well drying meats and all of those kinds of things. So anything about, you know, preserving food, they're, they're you know, teaching and working on. So that's a really good uh, thing as well. You probably didn't bring any information on that. I, I did we not. Did a, we did a, a, a story on that, so you might want to look up for uh, canning with the Master Gardeners and see if that uh, workshop is already exactly. over or not. But once again, you can get a hold of yeah. any Master Gardener. Give your phone number. You bet. 223-6482. Uh, 
or check us out on the web at cecentralsierra.edu. Okay, we're going to take a break. Great. And, uh, Thanks, Tom. Maybe you can make your own jerky. Okay, yeah. and uh, stay with us. More news on the other side of the break. You're watching Amador County's number one news and sports leader, TSPN.